if folks don't get serious about the feed the feed security thing it's going to become a serious issue because every year i hear people talk more and more how dry it gets you know mr bernard told us about that one lady who had to sell for animals right Give these folks a second to come back and let's uh are you guys hearing me or am i i'm hearing you okay i'm trying to see if um in the people watching if they're hearing me give me a thumbs up if you hear me um that would not be a good sign. yes they're hearing me all right cool hey dr denny Oh, Dr. Denny is here. I got to give thanks to all the folks that are always supporting. You know, enough respect and thank you for being hey, a part of this. Mr. Maitland. Mr. Um, okay, so the question I was asking was for you to give us a uh, brief rundown on the, the project in St. Thomas and how will it help with the TMR initiative that you're working on? And for who does know right. TMR, just tell them what TMR means and how does it help. All right, TMR is, TMR is the acronym for Total Mixed Ration. And the Total Mixed Ration is where we basically add all the ingredients that we want into one mix, one homogenous mix. So we add grass, we're going to add all the other raw ingredients, wheat middling, some hypergrains, some minerals that we, that we formulate, molasses, and we mix it. Um, we mix it into one feed and we give it to the animals. What this has proven is that because we, 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 we have a balanced, we have a nutrient-rich diet now that we basically turn into like a casserole, it, in, it improves the animal dry matter intake especially when we get the particle size done correctly and we get everything correctly the animals will eat way more than they will eat and that definitely drive production and so per bite you're getting a lot more nutrients that they will get when in the eating the individual ingredients so one bite is a complete meal with, com with compacted with nutrient dense that we have seen has changed the game for the dairy industry it has um Milk production has increased for farmers who have adopted the TMR system across the island. And we have seen now more purchases at the wagon to, to, to see where we start expansion of this whole, this technology, which I think we should, be, we should adopt. It's not, it's not new. We have been using total mixed ration in, in, in USA for 25 years ago. Um, whereas I say we're just a little bit behind time. I was saying we'd be 50 years behind America, uh, Israel, um, we, we're 25 years behind now with the TMR system, but we're finally getting there. The further project that we're planning to do is to help to boost this TMR system. You can't have TMR, you can't have the adoption of this technology unless you have further volume, right? We need, as we were talking about earlier, we need a certain amount of volume so you can feed the animals. So we're trying to look at ways of hope if we can conserve as much further as we can. And when we have large-scale producers going into this, it will drive commercial activity. They will start selling back the fodder when they have excess. Because they do have excess, it's just how to utilize it. You know, what type of machine to buy to harvest this grass, um, the best way to conserve it, and that is what we're actually doing now. Um, tomorrow, I'll be down in, tomorrow I'll be down in, in St. Thomas. I'll make, a, I'll, make, I'll make a vlog for it so you guys can actually see what we're starting to do tomorrow. Tomorrow is our groundbreaking day. On a Sunday, we're mm -hmm. livestock, so we work right throughout. So we start packing tomorrow. And our aim is a lot of metric tons, a couple thousand metric tons to, in storage, both for the farm and both to be distributed to farmers through the Jamaica Dairy Development Board. Um, that we hope now will be mimicked across the island. So we plan to go into Ryansbury, we plan to go into Appleton Estate, we plan to go across the island and now tackle where we have sugar cane, where we have farmers going into fodder and you know, equip them and turn them into fodder producers. 
Because if I turn you, Ray, into a photo producer, I know what will happen when you have an additional income coming from the amount of valuable grass that you have around you. And you can feed a group of farmers who we have as a core group. That will drive the expansion. So that is the aim. It's about you now really putting in place the systems that can work to make us become more commercial. Um, not about just selling your feed or anything, but to really implement sustainable long-term projects for the livestock sector. And Hypro is basically fully behind that initiative now where we have a lot of things coming in place to drive this. And in a few months, you guys will see the, small, the TMR system for small ruminants. It will be on the ground. And we'll definitely, you know, hopefully COVID won't limit it too much so we can have everybody getting access to what it really can do. And, you know, see how best also as farmers, we can have groups of farmers getting access to this technology. Because the end game is to, you know, roll out the entire package for a farmer. Um, it's a one-stop shop for everything. That's, that's the end game. Uh, Let me ask you a question. For, like, the father machine, the, the TMR machine, right? And you put all that stuff in. If you buy that, lovely, lovely, that lovely question. My thesis was based on looking at that. Um, one of the issues with silage is that the silage process is a fermentation process, mm -hmm. right? And it causes the breakdown of essential nutrients, especially protein. So one of my concerns was that if I was supposed to make a total mixed ration using expensive protein sources, I would basically be doing something redundant. I'll be reducing the protein for the back. I'll, give, I'll be feeding valuable protein that I want for my animals to the bacteria. So what we did was looking at how is it that we can use inoculants to kind of enhance this process because you have additives for silage. You have two, an inhibitor and a stimulant. And we want to use inoculants because they play both roles. They both inhibit and they both stimulate the best process. So we did one looking at Mr. Sam Arby Taylor here. We use his TMR and we use an ex-company TMR um, mimicking it in silage to see what will be the process when we add the additives. We add molasses, we add urea, add the inoculant, and we actually use salt, like a negative control. And the results were very good. We actually saw... No, we, 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 I saw, we saw a reduction in some protein levels for some, but we saw like for the molasses and for the inoculant, there was no reduction in, in crude protein. A matter of fact, in some cases, we saw slight increases in the crude protein value. Um, you know, that's what we call microbial protein, but which is a good thing. It signal, uh, it signal, uh, it signal a stable, it's, it signal a stable silage, something that can actually work. So the end game also is to have TMR in packages. When I was in Israel, I worked on a dairy farm, a dairy sawning farm, and we milked every day. And when the professor said, Khalil, go on order grass, and I took up the phone on order grass, it's packaged grass, it's a PMR come to me. Um, not a total mixed ration. I had to add the concentrate, but it was um, a wheat PMR mixed with minerals, mixed with corn cobs, mixed with, it was formulated. And then you just add the concentrate that, you know, each animal would need. I think that is, that's where we need to go. Um, if we're not looking in that direction, I wasted my time trying, trying to help, you know, trying to work in, trying to develop this system if we're not looking in that direction. Wow. So a medium-sized farmer that can produce, let's say, 50, 100 bags of this stuff on a regular basis can help the small farmers around them. Of course, that is what we want, Ray. That is what we want. We want the farmer with that amount of land. To think about helping a small farmer in community, right? If you, Ray, can help two farmers because you have access to grass, that's good. That's a start. You know, we do have Lincoln worrying, saying, oh, we're going to get grass. Um, you know, Khalil, we see more run go at Guyana. Because Guyana have the land to can plant grass. So we need to so start like that. So here's Lincoln's, and, here's Lincoln's question about molasses. Oh, mol hey, mo Lincoln, I can molasses. tell you, molasses, molasses is going to get worse. Remember the sugar industry gone down, you know? Remember so what is the factory? What is the right. solution? What is what is the solution? What, you guys, we yeah, have what is the solution or the substitute for molasses? We have an energy deficiency. That's what we're going to have. That's what we're going to end up with. So if you're making silage, 
the way we make salad right now is with molasses. Oh, no. All right. In Israel, there's no molasses. That is okay. why I'm bringing inoculants. Because inoculants will be the solution. That's, that's to replace the molasses. The oh, molasses, in, in our case, also helps with more palatability. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it make it sweeter. The animals will take it. But to really have, a, to have stable silage and to improve silage quality, the, it's the inoculants level. It's really the bacterial level is really where you want to play because the bacteria is who drive the process. So you want to ensure that you have a nice microflora of the best bacteria in these grasses, breaking it down and stuff. And, you know, you'll have good quality silage. Um, yeah, orange pulp is definitely a substitute for molasses in the silage. But I can tell you also that orange pulp is a seasonal thing. So, you know, and then, you know, the, the how much you can really get is, is also a problem. You know, some people really have problems um, getting citrus pulp. How long can TM? Oh, you think? How long you think TMR will be able to be stored? So let's say I made a whole batch of TMR today. I, I, we'll have to do some. We, I, I have, we'll have to look in that. I, I'll have to look into some work on that. I can't really say. It, okay. To me, it's not. It, it's very new. It's not that I can say is a bit new technology. Um, packaging TMR. Um, so we do have much research to kind of support that type of data. But they do package uh, yeah. a mixed yeah. company. So I got some questions from the live, the Facebook live. Yes. I know today's asking about rodents' problem with silage. I haven't had um, rodents' problem with yeah. my silage. That's, that's a problem. No, that's a good one, though. I would say yeah. to every farmer who plans to use silage, um, you have to have some form of pest control. You have to store it just like how you store your bag feed. Bag feed also draw rodents. So we have to have them on pallets. We have to have them in a clean room. We have to make sure that we might have a rat station bait around the place. But yeah, it will attract. It will attract, especially if you're using molasses that is so sweet or is, you know, it will attract, will attract pests. So you have to have that in place. Okay. That, that has to come with the package. Well, yeah, we just need two, two cats. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's get some cat to live in the storage, in the storeroom, and they'll they'll keep these uh these rats at bay. You live on a farm, you have a farm. Rats are gonna be there. Yeah, for, for sure. Whether you like it or not, they are gonna be there. You know, anything there, it's abundance of feed. Yeah, rats are going to be there. You have They're to be there. And yeah. most farms, you have to have some farm a pest control system to mm -hmm. protect your feed, protect your animals. You know, it, it's important. Yeah, anybody wants to donate two cats to me, we're open. We, we need two cats. <laughs> if you got cats running around your place, that you can send them over here, catch them, and we'll come get them if you're close to St. Mary or in St. Mary. We need two cats. Um, any other question, folks? Um, good, what is good, good, good question, Stanford. That's a good question. Um, the plastic drums, I believe, is much easier for some farmers to use. The issue I have with the plastic drum is that you have to ensure that I think it would fit the small bags that they have, like the bags that their board have. It's really unique to feed out to, to a set of animals. The drum, you might not feed out all of it one time. So if you have probably with problem with spoilage, but the plastic drums to me work good for some farmers who might can't have, you know, afford a pest control type of setup and might not have proper storage. Drums, plastic drum silage is a good idea. Yeah, well, how about a silage pit? Um, silage pit works. The feeding out of it is a problem. Some cases you need machinery to kind of feed out with like a buckle or they even have like a, like a, a shredder thing that shred it. So if you don't have certain machinery or the capacity to do it, I won't promote a silage pit to any normal farmer. I really think That's the drum not, or plastic bags that is, not, that is not exactly true. Mm -hmm. Tell me I, why. I, 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 did, I kind of have objection to that because I've seen a video online in Africa where this community built a silage pit to feed for the people in the community to get silage from. And they'll come with buckets and the guy will fill the buckets and then cover it up with tarp or whatever again. And 
I don't see any, any significant spoilage or they didn't you know heavy machinery to do this. All right. I get, so if I, I, get I have a saddle for my farm and and I know that one side once the saddle is good to go at two months or three months, I'm gonna use that whole section every day I'm taking from it till it's done, while the other one is being uh is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and that's what I, and that's what I was saying. It, the, the farmer will have to know is is a management strat. You have to have the protocol of how him going to feed this out. Hello. Yeah. You hear me? Hear. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. What is in that? What if, if a farmer doesn't understand? Mm -hmm. Doesn't understand or have a good not the whole to feed out silage that that is really my concern you know he has to understand that he have to feed it out quickly he have to understand how to cover it um so it's kind of to train persons into that it is much easier to train a person how to you know use the plastic bag silage and the plastic drums that i've seen than to put them into pits and to do a pit silage because we have demonstrated all um but it's just a, it, to me it's, a, it's much easier the plastic drum method and the plastic bag method it's probably the easiest method right now for a small, you know, a small farmer, for the small guy. Okay, okay, got it. Well, okay, explain what a, what the inoculant is. What is an inoculant? Um, inoculants are bacteria, fungus, microorganisms um, that you would add to the silage that would that would enhance the process. So, for example, silage uses is lactic acid bacteria. Lactic acid bacteria is important in lowering the pH. It's actually the pH that, you know, preserves the silage. We carry it to acidic levels between. Those, those are the ideal pH ranges for the silage. So what we do, we, we add back, these two back, bacteria. Back, so add... Repeat, repeat. What you said about the the um, pH thing, because you, you, you cut out there. Oh, oh okay. I'm saying that the, the lactic acid bacteria lowers the pH to acidic levels, like between 3.5 to 4.5. We want the oh. silage at that. That's what preserve it. Uh -huh. we, what we do is that we add we add these favorable bacteria, our fungus, our enzymes. To the, to the silage to kind of enhance the process to stimulate the process um so so would you promote farmers to start at least attempt to do silage because i know you can add you know corn or wheat middling and all that stuff to the silage when you're preparing it and that would basically be creating a tmr in it I, 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 would, I, would, I would tell farmers to do, if you can do silage or you can do hay, anyone works, you know, if you have, if you have land, if you have the access, I remember, look at Bruce, you know Bruce, mm -hmm. Bruce cut grass and Bruce make hay on top of him roof, right, he dry out the grass on top, um, any one of these methods to conserve water is, is the way that you should go. Big up Bruce and Bridge and Bruce in half a tree or close to half a tree. Everybody in here should know Bruce Chung or Chang, Chung. Yeah, he's a good, good guy, nice guy. Um, he's a he's the one who's always he plants a little fodder bank in his backyard. He cuts it, he puts it on the roof and dry it. Yeah, he's uh he's and very he, and he does it in a very small space. Like Bruce space is yeah. it's on. If you ever see what Bruce have, it's amazing. Um, very yeah. tiny thing like real backyard and, and you know that's what he works with every farmer you know cut some, some grass dry cut some grass on store it it's important if it works for what hold on yeah yeah there's a question that if side is worse for sheep and cows and rabbits. and rabbits i don't know about rabbits but i know i don't i, I, I yeah it works it works well for 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 all the, the, the major ruminants yeah. Um silage silage not really fed to the pseudo ruminants like your horses and rabbits. Mm -hmm. They more yeah, eat hay and that. Yeah, but sheep and and goats. Sheep, goats, cattle. Cattle. 
Silage is a big deal. Silage is a big deal. Yeah. How many acres? How many acres of grass for Holy Island? The grazing or for silage? It's our question. Which where is your question? Is it on Instagram? Mm -hmm. Repeat the question for me. How many acres of grass for a husband? Uh, that's a stocking rate, I'm assuming. Can you, do you have a familiarity with that? How many animals can you put on hundred acres of grass? All right. It all what? depends on the quality of the of the pasture. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah that, that that is definitely what this the text hundred animals. Oh, the question is the other way. A hundred animals, how many acres would you need? All right, wait now. The textbook is textbook textbook says it's like ten is like between eight to ten animals per acre. Yes. So if you want uh a hundred animals, you just use that, you know, ten into a hundred. So you yes. really but that is not real. What what kind of grass you're using? Yeah. Because every grass have a certain amount of dry matter per acre or per hectare. So for example, Mumbasa grass, one of the benefits of Mumbasa grass is that Mumbasa grass give you more dry matter per acre. You know, like an African star might give you ten, Mumbasa will give you a twenty. King grass, you know, will give you a 25 ton of dry matter per acre or per hectare. So that is how you have to look at it. That you can use to, to mimic your system. And that is why, again, we have to move. What we think, we're not, I kind of moving away from the grazing system because it, the, the, the semi-intensive system is really the way where we can cut and carry what we need. The volumes that we need, we can plant it as a fodder bank cut the amount of tonnage that we need and feed to the animal and to say, hey, go and run up and down outside and find what you need. Unless your system is very structured. Unless you have the money you can put in your paddocks and put in the right, the right grasses for your animals to consume. Because, for example, I know the guinea grass does well on your farm, Ray, But uh -huh. I don't think guinea grass is a grazing grass for, for goat, goat and sheep. No, it's not a grazing grass for these animals, you know. Yeah, because you know, they're around the thing. Yeah, it's not a grazing grass for, for, for you. You'll never go countries and see that them saying, hey, you know, I use guinea grass to feed goat, goat and sheep. You know, the shape of it alone, the morphology of the grass, show you that it's, not, it's not the best grass for your animal to consume and get the right amount of dry matter that you need. You know? Okay. So why does it work? Why does it work for me? Uh, your system is different. When we go to your, when we look into your pastures, you have a mixed pasture system. You have guinea grass, and it mixed with a lot of legumes. You have a lot of like centra, sema, and siatra running through your pastures, which you see the goats always nibbling on. So you're not only getting, you're not only getting just your guinea grass. You have additional protein sources and other fodder inside of your inside of your guinea grass fodder. That is why your your farm is doing well. So like in animal conditions, look really good. You know, same way. You have a mixed partial system than just pure stand guinea grass. That's good to know. Because I was going to rip the whole thing up when you say no, guinea no grass. Way. Good. What you, what, you have, what you have is fear. I would add more of the legumes to the pasture, you know. But what you have, you can work with. But it's not the ideal grass to feed sheep and goat as a grazing grass. It's not. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, Dr. Young wants you to speak about silage and listeriosis. Um, I think Dr. Young can answer that, the, the listeriosis. That sounds more like a vet question. Do you, sound, know, do you know, any, do you know like, what, 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 what listeriosis is? That sounds like it's coming from a bacteria. Um, yeah. And that is definitely something that you have to look into. That is why we're going to inoculants. Because what the inoculants do, it works off a competitive repression. So we would add the best bacteria to the silage to kind of compete against a bad one, like probably what can come from what, a listeria bacteria that can cause from listeriosis. But I'm sure Dr. Young can probably better explain that more than me. Well, I guess Dr. Young is going to have to make a second appearance um, so we can get these questions answered by the most yeah, accomplished definitely, definitely, the I can definitely talk about disease problem more than me. Yeah, um, because, you know, Dr. Young is on the forefront when it comes to supporting 
small ruminants or ruminants overall in Jamaica. So I think we should try to secure her for a second round. Now that we have getting more questions, we're getting more in depth in in you know these things. I think it would be nice to have her back. Um, and she just made a comment that Sadish can have. Yeah, they have the zero. Yeah. So yeah, Doctor Young, uh, we'll we'll figure out when you're available again to come and give us um, some answers on some of these in depth things. Now that we're we as farmers are looking towards you know, better things to feed our animals or more secure way of feeding our animals, we need to know the drawbacks. We need to know the risks. You know, silage is great until you open a bag and don't know if it's spoiled or not and feed it to your animal. And it and then just drop down because of toxins. Definitely. So yeah. There's a lot more. There's a lot more. And that that is the next discussion that we should have. Um the silage quality. You know, like everything there are parameters check before we actually feed out the silage. So, you know, that is, that, that's the next thing. Yeah, there, there is disadvantages with silage. Um, one of it, one such thing is the cost to the silage. It's pretty labor intensive, grass, shaft, grass, and pack it. So you have to ensure that you, you have the right resources and facilities to do silage. Um, again, the pest can be a problem. Um, if you, if the bag, if the integrity of your seal is not probably, you might just waste it. If it, the material that you put inside your side, if it's not good enough, you're wasting your time. So there is a lot of technical work that have to go in into making a proper. That is why I really try to make sure that if I prom if I do that farmer, I ensure that I'm there to guide the process and kind of what is it that we're really looking for. And then we have to do a quality check afterwards. We'll come and check the pH, we come and they might we'll come and check bacterial levels. Because that's a whole that's the whole part of it. You might be in a situation where um you're growing up that is probably on a sewage pit and that can lead to problems. So, you know, we have to really consider in everything that we're doing. We do those quality checks before we invest in this type of thing. So yeah, this yeah, thanks, Dr. Young, for bringing that up because, you know, it's good that we have people looking at this stuff from different points of view, you know, and be, keep the farmers informed on the risks that they'll take, you know, and then figure out, is the risk worth, you know, worth it, you know, because is the risk if, worth you it right, no, no. if you do it right, then you minimize the, the, the issues you will have. And technical support from people like Khalil or, you know, Google University and um, YouTube uh, <laughs> technical support, you can do it. I'm, 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 I'm not lying. Like, YouTube will give you in-depth, step-by-step um, -step, um, process doing silage. You know, so... Don't be scared to, if you have the resources, to think about doing it. You should just go for it. You know, at least try a couple drums or a couple bags and see if it works for you. Then you know what's the correct way to do it or the incorrect way of doing it. But for sure that we're going to have to start doing this stuff if we're feeding our animals um, in a secure way where we don't have to worry about feet. Any other question, folks? I don't want to hold up much more of the mm -hmm. the weekend of Mr. Brown because he told me earlier this is his turn of night. So yes, <laughs> you know. So he's just giving me. I think I have less than ten minutes left for his time. Can I suggest a replacement? How long will be able to access this? How can we access inoculants? Um, we well, get that. I, there, there, there's a, there's a local supplier. Um, we're trying to get to be a supplier of, we, 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 we might be venturing in that avenue. I'm not sure, but I can point person to some local suppliers or overseas club supply if they really want to, you know, get in some inoculants. Um, their board also have access, and you know. The dear board, the dear board is providing technical support in silage making, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and that would be Mr. Parks. 
is the yes, no, no. big um, yeah, yeah. and he's very supportive of this uh silage making initiative he's um, a big yeah we, 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 we wrote a project document with them actually the projects that is rolling out north silage is really a collaboration between us and the dairy board with the small ruminant association us and the dairy board and with separate um we're really pushing this thing and i can say mr parks is really uh, you know really buying into this vision as in he was a part of it from a long time he was he was one of the he was one of the guys that was you know a part of the mombasa bringing team the columbia civil pastoral team mr parks was who in you know he invested in me going to israel um so we understands where where the game is going and the dear boy is supporting this initiative so much he says Khalil um get the small ruminant guys involved it's not just about dairy it's about cattle farm you know we all together and I can say that's a, that's a kudos to that to kind of have that new change in, in tone from the dairy development board you know it's really good that's, that's a positive for the sector yeah I can speak from experience that Mr. Parks is really really excited and driven when it comes to silage making you know, I've spoken to him personally about it, and he is a big supporter and wants small permanence to be a big part of it. No uh, doubt. There's another question here. Um, it says, I live close to a chips factory. How much banana peels can be fed to goats? Well, I think that question yeah. was answered. It depends. You have to text me offline. Uh, text me offline and we can have more uh, more food for discussion. Yeah, send, send Mr. Farmer Khalil a DM or on Facebook message. You'll get it. You can talk about yeah, inclusion I... and send you a document to show you the acceptable inclusion rates for some of these raw, raw ingredients and, and feed stuff. Um, to have a, you know, as in, I think that, that's a big problem. Like, for example, we feed a lot of brewers green. But there is an inclusion rate and also a diminishing return rate when feeding brewers grain. So we have to kind of look into what we're doing. We, I'll, say, I'll, I'll kind of post something like that also so for everybody to see. You know, the rates for citrus pulp, for brewers grain, for wheat That's middling. always a big oh. question I have. I always ask farmers when they're using these um, byproducts, whether it's um, beer ops, citrus pulp, you. all that stuff. yeah and what's you know i know there's a new, great nutritional value to it but what's the proper usage proper usage that 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 is where the tmr would change the game because the tmr is based on on inclusion rates as we fix these things into the farm um what is the acceptable inclusion rate and that's where things will, will change and <laughs> and here here's my point guys I don't want people to get out, you know, get the wrong impression because everybody says beer ops work. So we know it works. But how much yeah, of don't... it will give you the same results that you're getting now? Like, how do you figure out, am I using, can I use 50% of what I'm using now and get the same result? That's what I'm talking I about. Get the same you know? Um, yeah. Definitely. That, that's I think that thing again Lincoln came up with that cost analysis and that is where where we need to fine tune these they, they have data for the cattle for cattle for for dairy they surely have data regarding you know what really makes sense for beef they have it for small ruminants is a no 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 don't see much data on that as yet uh, especially like in our tropical area um we we'll have to probably check down in you know see what chain that have um with, with, with research down there there's not much data on that. Um, what really work? But brewers green, I can't yeah. say. I was an outstanding, outstanding ingredient. We can't, we can't go around brewers green. It's yeah, I, it's just a matter of how much of it. How much? You know, how much? Really? What you really need? What, yeah. How, how much of it you really need to create a proper, you know, TMR or whatever? And then you may realize that look, what I use in a month could actually go for two months because now I know exactly how now much I know exactly how much to use. Yeah, yeah. And then I think the storage too, I think one of the reasons why farmers just, just feed it out so often because it, it's smelly. 
and you, yeah, have, yeah. you don't want to smell it, smell it right. to farm. So you just want to feed it out quickly. And guys, you can store brewer's grain as silage. You can drum it up and seal it for as long as possible. If I get it again, I'm going to have to put it in drums. I did not like the smell. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. And we get a, quite a bit of visitors because, you know, it's true, this agro-tourism destination. So having that smell around, she was not impressed. <laughs> she was not impressed. Um, but thank you, Khalil. Thank you very much. I know we could go all night talking about this stuff, you know, because feeding animals. Yeah, I know, I know, right? Yeah, these people are very passionate about feeding their animals. And, you know, Jamaica have a sure goat culture. You know? It is all about them goat that look the best. It has to shine and glisten like them eyelid it up. You know? and they, <laughs> this, everybody shine. Yeah, and them have a fat and, you know, fat and hang off of them. Like, yeah, that's how Jamaicans like them goat look. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm talking to you, Mackie. Yeah, Mikey. Yeah, yeah, Mikey. Yeah, Mikey. Yeah, Mr. Condition, man. Yeah, Mikey, you get a call. You have a way to go. Um, but thank you very much for taking the time on this long weekend, bro. I know. No um, to everybody who's watching, thank you guys for joining us and happy emancipation day. I don't know if they should find a different word for a day like this that's so important in saying, instead of saying happy. Like now, man, it's more than happy. You know what I mean? A push, you know, a bigger, uplifting, upliftment. I don't know what the word should be, but emancipation to me means more than just being happy. You know, so, thank you it's all. So true. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you guys next week again. Um, I mean, you're going to be seeing Trudy's beautiful face next weekend because we always do the alternative, alternate thing. So, Thank you guys and have a pleasant and uplifting emancipendent. What? Bam, I got it right. Emancipendent time. All right, respect. All right. <laughs>